So, I got this uh, email from a guy named Rick Mahoney. He asked me to do uh, an episode about different types of speakers. Because I, I guess I do assume that people just know what, they, what I'm talking about. <laughs> Big assumption there, right? But that uh, all these different kinds of speakers, starting with uh, active versus passive speakers. So, active speakers have built in amplifiers. So they have, and sometimes they have more than one per speaker, like one amplifier for the woofer and another amplifier for the tweeter, maybe a third amplifier <laughs> for the uh, mid-range. I have a cold, so I'm gonna try to get through this without coughing too much. Um, and sometimes active speakers also have digital um, parts to them, so they might have a built-in uh, digital to analog converter, meaning you could hook up a digital source to an active speaker. Uh, and sometimes they have DSP, digital signal processing. Sometimes they do room correction, all kinds of complicated stuff. But basically, uh, active speakers are anything from a, you know, a sound bar. Most sound bars have built-in amplification. So it's not just like a high-end thing, active speakers. They're, they, they come in all flavors. I mean, a lot of desktop speakers are active. Uh, one of my favorites, Audio Engine A2s that are $250 a pair, are active speakers, and now they have <laughs> built-in uh, DACs and stuff, digital converters. So uh, the active category is very active. A lot, of, a lot of stuff going on in active speakers, that category. But then we get to passive speakers, or, which are exactly the opposite. They're not passive as in shy and retiring. They're passive as in they don't have built-in amplifiers and they don't have built-in digital converters and stuff. They're just a speaker and you have to hook up a separate amplifier and everything else that goes in front of that amplifier to the passive speaker. Audiophile speakers tend to be passive speakers because audiophiles like picking their own amplifier and digital converter and all that other stuff that's part of an audiophile system. So there's some uh, uh, controversy, disagreement about that, that there's a lot of audiophile active speakers, and, and there are some, like the uh, KEF uh, LS50 wireless is an active speaker, the active version of the passive LS50. There are, I could, I could point to a few. Certainly Meridian has made a lot of very, very active, <laughs> um, very expensive uh, speakers. Matter of fact, I don't think they make passive speakers. Uh, Meridian, the British company. Anyway, so that's the whole active-passive thing. Get that out of the way. Then we get to box speakers. And box speakers are, let's just start with the normal type of uh, box speaker, which means that the drivers, the tweeter, and <coughs> maybe a mid-range, <coughs> and maybe the woofer, are flush-mounted to the front baffle in some form or another. That's what I would call a box speaker. Now, another kind of box speaker is uh, a horn speaker, like a Klipsch or a JBL. So they have, it's a box, but the tweeter and possibly the mid-range and sometimes even the woofer are mounted in a horn, a piece that comes out like that. It's sort of horn-shaped, and uh, horn speakers tend to be more efficient than the first type of box speaker, the ones where all the drivers are uh, flush-mounted to the front baffle. Uh, I will uh, find some links, and I will put those links in the description box below this video to be more illustrative of what the hell I'm talking about, at least for these kinds of differ, different types of products. So horn speakers' uh, advantage over flush-mounted speakers is that they're uh, higher sensitivity and or tend to be more dynamic. Then we get to... Uh, Another, well, I wouldn't call it yeah, a box, but it's sort of a box, is omnidirectional speakers. I was just at the Ohm factory in Brooklyn, and they make speakers that radiate sound 360 degrees horizontally. And so Ohm makes um, <coughs> omnidirectional speakers. MBL, the German company, makes omnidirectional speakers. <coughs> I think Mirage in Canada is still making omnidirectional. It's not a huge, it is um, another German company, Audiophysic, makes... Um, uh, omnidirectional speakers, and that is a separate category, and they're kind of a box, but usually the, to, to radiate 360, you have to be open <laughs> at around 360. Which reminds me of the next category is open baffle speakers, um, which means that though they look like a box from the front, the ba they don't have a back. So the, if you walk around to the back of the speaker, you'll see the naked drivers, the, ba the base drivers, the mid-range drivers, 
possibly the tweeter. They've just been mounted on a flat baffle. So it's a panel speaker of a sort. Um, uh, so Desus, Dysus, <laughs> uh, the, the Italian company that I was talking about not long ago that makes horn speakers. The horns are the mid-range and tweeter, but their woofers are, are always uh, open baffle. Um, woofers and mid-ranges are open baffle designs. Then we get the panel speakers like my long-term favorites, Magnapan. And Magnapan, they, they are literally panels. Uh, most Magnapans are about a little more than an inch thick. Uh, they radiate just as much sound from their rear side of the panel as the front side, the side that's face, facing you, the listener. Um, and um, some panel speakers, not Magnapans, also have woofers to augment their, their bass response. Uh, Martin Logan makes electrostatic panel speakers that usually have a woofer of some type at the, the bottom part of the panel with the box for the woofer. And they also, the, the electrostatic part, uh, is free to radiate sound forward and back. Have we rounded the bend? Have we covered all the different types of speakers? I think we have. But the thing I have to impress upon you is that there's not really a pecking order to these speakers. It's not that panels are better than boxes or horns or better than omnidirectional speakers. They're different, and they're different uh, for different needs and different rooms. If I mean, if, if everybody lived in the exact same size room or their listening rooms were all exactly the same, uh, speaker designing would be a hell of a lot easier. But since the speaker designer doesn't know if you live in a, in an, a 10 by 11 foot, your, your listening room is 10 by 11 feet or 40 by 60 feet, and whether it's filled with furniture or has no furniture, whether it's rectangular, whether you have lots of mirrors, there's a million things, a big thick uh, carpeting on the floor and a big fluffy couch. All of things radically change the way speakers sound in a room and how far the speakers are from the wall. A million, well not a million, but lots of uh, variables in how speakers are deployed in rooms, which, the, which is unknown to the speaker designer, right? So since they don't know your room, hence they make, well, not hence, but they do make lots of different kinds of speakers that behave differently in different rooms. I wish there was a simple path from, I have this room and this type of speaker would be best. I wish that was possible, uh, but it's not. I will just say, <laughs> I'll make one thing easy, that tiny speakers tend to sound, or small speakers, tend to sound good in smallish rooms. And big speakers, you know, ones that are as big as you and weigh as much as you, tend to sound big and sound best in large rooms. Uh, Again, there are always exceptions, so don't flood me with, with well, but I have a giant speaker in a closet and it sounds fantastic. I'm sure it can happen, but generally speaking, small speakers in small rooms, big speakers in big rooms is a really good starting point for how to pick a speaker. Anyway, the purpose of this, this video today was just to define these different types of speakers, which I think I have done. I think I've done a, a, a hell of a job. And if you think I have, please like these videos, share these videos, and I urge you, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. When you subscribe, you'll see a little bell thing there to cl and click on that bell and you'll be notified every time there's an exciting new chapter of the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And if you really, really, really dig this channel, check out my Patreon page, which is at P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash audiophiliac and i will thank you very much in advance for doing that see you next time